Hello everyone, just thought I'd make a, a quick video. I've not uh, spoke much on here for a while, so I thought I'd do a little a little talk just to see where we're at and what's what's been going on in my life, you know. Uh, and since the Sean Atwood show, I've had um, a lot of messages, a lot of positive, positive messages and comments and stuff like that. So uh, a lot of a lot of direct messages as well. So. Just want to uh, speak about a few things that that have been asked and stuff, you know. So, um, first of all, the I want to touch up on the I want to talk about addiction again, you know. Well, a lot of people since the Sean Atwood uh, podcast that I've done talking about addiction and people messaging about advice and wanting to talk about uh, about about the disease of addiction and um, asking about an air and and about about things you know I like is it hard is it easy and stuff like that you know like to stay clean and uh no uh, it's not hard. it's not easy to stay clean um it is hard you still have these thoughts you're still living with this this disease every day but you know it, it's a lot easier being clean than it is being out there in active addiction chasing that next hit uh, doing the things that I've done to get my to feed my habit was was f f hard, a hard. Uh, you know, I've done some horrendous things. I've done some things that morally don't ever sit well with me and never will. You know, I, uh, I've done some real bad things. You know, stole from family, friends. <sighs> Just I, I done, I done bad things. You know, so yeah, uh, I was clean for seven years, but if you look through my videos, you'll see that I did relapse. I relapsed a few months ago and gave up my seven year clean time, which is fine, which is fine. At the end of the day, I'm only human. And uh, it, every relapse I've survived is is a learning curve for me, is, is you know, is, is, learned, is, is learned um, and took on board from my last relapse. My last, my last relapse was horrendous. Um, yeah, took me to the cleaners, took me straight, you know, I, I've been, things have gone so well since I put drugs down, since I got into recovery, since I, I worked at my programme and since I got clean, things have gone well, you know, I, I, I've become a, a miles, miles better person, you know, um, but I'm only human, you know, it, it is what it is, you take your eye off the ball and things can happen, you know, so if if, if you're out in recovery and, or you're out there and you, you've got some clean time, just keep at it. It works if you work it. Just keep doing it, you know. Um, each day as it comes, 24 hours, you know the score. Um, people who are in active addiction, still stuck in active addiction. Look, I was the worst of the worst. I, you know, I was at my rock bottom. I was practically homeless. I had nothing. I was half the size I am. I was hungry. I was, you know, I was in some state. And uh, I'm clean. I got clean. If I can do it, you can do it, you know. So if you're stuck in active active addiction and you're watching this, just you know, it's 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 you can do it, you know. You you can get clean. There's a program out there that will save your life and give you a life beyond your wildest dreams. Um, yeah. Uh, other other things I've been asked and been been wanting uh, wanting to talk about is. You know the training and and the the Lee Duffy stuff and um, podcasts and stuff like that. You know, uh, I am grateful for for the platform that I've been getting put on lately to be able to tell my story and, and carry the message. You know, uh, yeah, all that, all that, all that fighting and being the artist and all that beginning of my story is bullshit. By the way, it is bullshit. Like that has been well and truly removed from me. Being the artist on them streets means absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. It's, it's just an illusion that we grew up with of being the biggest, baddest person on them streets. And truth be told, there's always someone bigger and harder around the corner. No matter what, there's always someone more dangerous, there's always someone more gamer, there's always someone who could potentially kill you. You know, so you could be out there running the streets, being this biggest, baddest person, but let me tell you something, now you will meet your match, and you always will. So, it means nothing to me. It means absolutely nothing to me. Um... Yeah, so but putting that that stuff into a gym, a fighting gym, that stuff that I was brought up around, that fighting mentality that 
you know, when I walked into a fighting gym, I felt right at home, and that's where I put all my focus and concentration on, and it, and it, uh, you know, I thrived and I loved it. It was something that, it's one of the best things I've ever done in my life. It's up there with having my kids, 10 professional and fighting in rings and cages because there's no ego, there's no pride. It's two warriors fighting, possibly to the death. And when the winner's, when the winner's announced and you've both survived, you have nothing but respect for that man. You're glad he survived. You're glad you both survived. And you know what? It's something beautiful that happens. It's a sport that you've got to respect, you know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah, the Sean Atwood thing that I've done has, uh, has opened my eyes a little bit to the platform that he's on, you know, and, and the people that have messaged me and, and reached out for help. It's, uh, it's been overwhelming. It really has. You know, a lot of positive stuff, a lot, a lot of positive messages and comments has been great. A few negative ones, which, you know, you've got to laugh at because you have these 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 keyboard warriors and whatnot, what, what, whatever you just want to call them, you know, saying nasty stuff or saying stuff, you know, like, I read one comment saying, uh, you know, there's, pe there's, there's people at home watching their kids and, and sitting with the wives who will beat these men up. <laughs> maybe that's, you know, when I read that comment, I thought, yeah, well, maybe you're true, maybe that's right, you know, but like I just said at the beginning of this video, there's always someone bigger than I around the corner. All I know is that means nothing to me. Since when I became, when I become a trained fighter, a, 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 a professional athlete, you could have put King Kong in front of me and I would have had a go. I would have fought him for anything. But that's what athletes do. That's what professional fighters do. See, that street stuff means nothing to me. So you can comment stupid stuff like that all you, all you want. It does not affect me because that mentality of that is just gone. It means nothing to me. Absolutely nothing. But, uh, yeah. Um, the training's going well. I, I, I'm back in training. I'm back hitting pads. I'm back sparring. I'm back punching stuff and bags and stuff. You know, I'm really enjoying it. Uh, I'm getting fit. Um, I've been running. I've dropped a stone in weight. I've calmed down on lifting the weights. And, uh, yeah, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling positive. I feel like there's something being real lit. There's something real lit inside me where I'm really wanting to, to lace up again. But steady does it. I'm, uh, I just want to get back enjoying training and fighting again and let's see where we go you know the plans that i've got for the future i'm still pursuing i'm still pursuing and opening a gym we've got a few things in the pipeline um you know due to covid and the pandemic reasons the things have been put on hold but i am pursuing it and uh, and you know I, I believe we'll get there i'm cur i'm currently training out of contender gym with coach gary bell uh mr k1 himself from the northeast I don't think there's any many better. I don't think there's many coaches that suit me the way Gary does. He's a K1 Dutch style K1. He has a Muay Thai lads in there. Good, good fighters come out with contender Jimmy Stockton. Um, yeah. So that's where I'm at. Um, my personal life's going alright. I'm um, my daughter's finally been diagnosed with autism, which we already knew anyway. We just don't know where she's at with the spect on the spectrum. You know, I've done a lot, a lot of research around autism, which is took me down some rabbit holes uh to say the least you know where i've struggled i've struggled on a daily basis to well as an obsessive thinker with my addiction and i do everything to obsession i have searched the a lot of stuff around autism and i've always looked for someone to blame when truth be told i wouldn't change it for the world she is my little ray of sunshine she is unbelievable you know my other boy lennox he's 10 he's class beautiful little boy he is and my oldest daughter's currently doing their levels a stars b's nays she's getting uh so proud of her beautiful little girl um yeah i'm blessed so blessed uh, yeah on that note guys stay tuned to this channel because uh i'm going to be more active keep you updated on my fighting career see when we can get back uh hopefully we'll be doing more filming and talking about the lee duffy uh, and the sales film and um yeah i'll be keeping you updated leave leave a comment if you want to hear me talk about any more addiction or any or anything like that but uh, i really appreciate the following that i'm getting and um it means a lot to me thank you guys take care god bless